Oh, what is up, you guys? My name is Mr. First One, and welcome back to Reaction Week, installment 15. 15 episodes, 15 installments, and 7 episodes apiece. That is a, quite a few videos, if you guys haven't been doing the math. But yes, in this particular episode, and this is also the last Reaction Week video for November, I know, it sucks to say, but at the same time, we're going to be moving on to some fantastic games in the next upcoming weeks and the next upcoming stuff. I'm planning on doing something for my 200 subscriber deal, so don't worry, I'm coming up with ideas in my head of what I should do. Uh, when I hit the big, the big, big numbers, I'll start doing even more crazy stuff and re really cool stuff like that, so... You know, help the channel get up even higher and see what I have planned for those. <laughs> anyway, this is going to be about me, Glory Goat, and this is going to be about us reacting to some 10 animals that can live after death. I'm moving face cam back over here, by the way, because I like being on this side of the coin, like every other YouTuber in existence. So, without further ado, hit her. Oh, this is top five's best, by the way. All information to me in the description down below. Here we go! Immortality has long fascinated us humans. Numerous people have searched for the secret of living forever for centuries. But it seems like we've been beaten to it by our animal friends. To an extent, at least. Today, we will be looking at 10 animals that can live after death. Make sure you stay tuned for number one, as this creature just might be immortal. Number 10. Let's see. Cockroaches. Yeah. It shouldn't come as a surprise that these tiny these little buggers. bugs would make this list. Cockroaches are infamous for their tenacity, and are often cited as the most likely survivors of a nuclear war. Some even claim they can live without their heads. Well, surprise, surprise, they can live without their heads. In fact, they can go on living for two weeks. To understand how these bugs can survive decapitation, first we must understand how we fragile humans couldn't. First of all, humans bleed, and when a man's head comes off, he bleeds a lot. Cockroaches don't have that problem, though. They have an open circulatory system, which translates to little to no blood pressure. So if their head pops off, the wound just closes naturally due to clotting. And secondly, and probably obviously, human heads kind of hold a very important part of our body, our brain. And without it, humans will not function. Eating, drinking, and breathing are all impossible without the head. But cockroaches, on the other hand, don't need their heads to breathe, as they do this process through little holes located on their bodies, called spiracles. Although a headless cockroach will die of starvation eventually, it's going to take them weeks for them to do so. Number 9. <laughs> bees. Oh god. This might sound like a cop-out to you. No, bees die and they stay dead. However, there is a reason why they appear on this list, because even though a bee might be dead, it can still sting you. Yeah. Not in the way that you think, of course. Dead bees obviously can't go flying around and actively sting you. It's that their stinging parts, and more importantly, the venom delivery system will still work even if the bee is long dead. Right. When a bee stings, the sting detaches from its body, leaving it embedded into the skin of its victim. <laughs> Attached to the sting is a tiny organ that both contains the bee venom and a tiny muscle that pumps the venom out. Due to the simple physiology of bees, these actions are not controlled by the bee's simple brain, but rather by involuntary impulses. Yeah. So if you think that you're safe picking up a dead bee, think again. Number 8. Chickens. Oh god, yes. There is truth to the expression running around <laughs> like a headless chicken, after all. Yeah, ask any farmer and they'll tell you, chickens can still run around with their heads cut off. And there's a very simple reason for this, and it's not because chickens are zombies. No, the reason is, believe it or not, human error. This error happens to be a butcher's error, to be more specific. Yeah. You see, a chicken's central nervous system is very different from us humans. Some basic bodily functions are controlled not by the brain itself, but by certain parts of the brain's stem. So, what does this all mean? Well, the butcher chomps the chicken's head to high, most of the time it's just the forebrain of the chicken that comes off with its head, leaving the brain stem and the cerebellum quite intact. In fact, if the butcher also misses the jugular, not only will the chicken continue to move, it sometimes can still breathe. Of course, it eventually starves to death. But there is one special case that a chicken survived 18 whole months without its head. Jesus. Number 7. The Octopus. I heard about I'm that. I'm pretty sure that you've seen videos online where an octopus, after being chopped up, continues to move. In fact, in certain Asian countries, eating fresh octopus is a deadly delicacy. Yeah. It's not really the octopus that survives after being chopped up, but rather eight wily arms that continue to move about. And it's these eight arms that usually get stuck in someone's throat, resulting yeah. into a very bad day. The reason why octopuses' arms maintain mobility even after being chopped off is quite fascinating. It's because their central nervous system is quite unique. 
You see, most of an octopus's nerve cells, two out of three of them in fact, can be found not in the brain where you would expect them to be, but rather in its tentacles. And these arms can continue reacting to stimuli even if they are no longer connected to the main brain. In fact, they remain responsive even after the octopus has been long dead and the arms severed. Researchers in St. George University in London conducted extensive experiments on this phenomenon. After the animals were euthanized, their arms were removed and kept in chilled seawater for up to an hour until they were ready for experimentation. Some arms were suspended vertically, and others were laid out horizontally. They then pinched them. The suspended arms recoiled from the unpleasant stimulus by shortening and curling in a corkscrew shape within one second. Horizontal arms also moved away from the undesirable stimuli, many bending in a sort of contrived joint toward the top. These movements can happen up for a week after the octopus's death. Number six, salamanders. If you're gonna come up with a list of animals that stubbornly continue to live even after apparent death, you'll be hard pressed not to include the salamander. salamander. This animal has always been synonymous to long life and immortality. It's even revered by people who believe in magic, believing that the amazing regenerative powers of this animal can be considered paranormal. Salamanders have the uncanny ability to regenerate any part of its body that has been chopped off. Right. More amazingly, these regrown parts actually function the same as, or in some cases, even better than the original parts. This is mainly because of a special protein found in salamanders, which facilitates the replication of cells. This protein can also be found in humans, but in smaller quantities, and they help us heal from our wounds. So does this mean that we can soon regenerate severed limbs? Well, we're not quite there yet. No. But scientists are continuing to study salamanders and how their unique ability can benefit humans in the future. Number five. We have cool handy things. Frogs. It has been discovered frogs. that frogs continue to move around yeah, even when they're brain sucker. dead. Or to put it more accurately, with its brain missing. This experiment was brought about when scientists discovered reports of various headless animals continuing to move about. That's very impressive on its own, but let's face it, there's only so much any creature without a head can do. So what happens if you leave the frog's head intact, but take out its brain, you ask? Well, thanks to the let's chop out its brain and see what the hell happens approach to science taken by 19th century neurologist David Ferrier, we can tell you. A headed but brainless frog actually behaves very similarly to a frog with its gray matter perfectly intact. If you turn it upside down, it will ride itself. If you pinch its feet, it will hop away. If you put it in water, it will swim to the side and climb out. And perhaps most disturbing of all, it will even croak contentedly if you stroke its back. The factor that results in frogs' zombie-like tendencies is the power of the reflex reaction, which fires the necessary electrical impulses that cause a muscle to expand or contract. Number 4. Oh. Fly. Oh. You've probably seen David Blaine resurrect dead flies just by touching them, and no, this is not because the magician really has supernatural powers. Flies can survive freezing temperatures and go into some kind of suspended animation. What you really see David doing is thawing the frozen fly using his own body heat. When the insect fully thaws, the fly then flies away. But this amazing ability to survive freezing temperatures is not why the humble fly makes it to this list. Female flies will live for several days after they have been decapitated. Such beheaded females assume an upright stance comparable to that of a normal fly, and can do and engage in complex actions such as preening, flying, and under duress, walking. Even more amazingly, males will court decapitated females. That's right, chop off a female fly's head and not much changes, really. Yeah. If anything, it serves to make the fly's behavior more human-like. The males still want to have sex with her, while she in turn treats their sexual advances as noxious foreign stimuli. Number three, turtles. Turtles. The hearts of fish, reptiles, oh, birds, and oh, mammals alike have their own pacemaker cells that take over when the signals from the brainstem are not coming through for some reason which ensures that the heart still functions for a while, even when the brain does not. Now the turtle takes the term for a while to a whole new level, and this is because from their heart's viewpoint, being cut off from the oxygen and nutrients usually supplied by the blood is just a normal day at the office. Because these animals can die for a long time. How long? Well, try 5,000 hours in the case of the loggerhead musk turtle. Yeah, you heard that right. That was a five followed by three zeros, and they survived that long by what oxygen they can take up from the water via their skin, throat, and butt end, as well as their body's amazing potential for producing energy without oxygen. Their hearts have their own fuel stash, and they just won't give up until every last fill-up of that has been used up. God, now dang. it's time for the day's best pick. Ooh, who's it gonna be? Today we're gonna focus on an animal Snake. so ferocious it can still kill you with its hands. What the hell is that? Perfect for Halloween, honestly. Number two, 
Oh, I thought we were number Snakes. one. Yeah, I knew about snakes. People's reaction when faced with a highly venomous snake can be boiled down into three categories. Running away, freezing on the spot, and oh god, kill it. <laughs> chop its head off. <laughs> While indeed chopping the thing's head off may seem the most feasible way to avoid getting bitten, the truth is that that may not be the case. A snake's head, a vessel for its fangs and deadly poison sacs, still have the ability to bite you and deliver deadly venom, even if it's no longer attached to the rest of its body. Yes. The snake has heat-sensitive pits at either side of its face, which it uses to detect threats. In this case, if you're close enough for your body heat to be detected, you're close enough to be considered a threat. These heat-sensitive pits are capable of detecting a threatening presence for hours after death, which means the snake may continue to defend itself, zombie style. And yes, this even applies if the body is no longer attached. I saved the best for last, but first, I no, have a quick we'll challenge see. that takes only five seconds to complete. If you can leave a like and subscribe within the next five seconds, you'll get 10 years of amazing luck. Just try it, it really works. Number yeah, right. one. Flatworms. Oh god. Are you familiar with the old wives tale about how earthworms reproduce? It states that if you cut an earthworm in half, two earthworms will form from the severed halves. Of course, this has since been proven to be completely hokum. However, substitute the earthworm with a flatworm, and then this old wives' tale suddenly becomes a very true disturbing story. Flatworms, or planarians, are known as masters of regeneration. They can rebuild any part of their bodies after amputation. If one is cut in half, the head portion grows a tail, and the tail portion grows a head. Cut it into 20 pieces, and 20 new worms, each an exact copy of the first, are created. This has been exploited by Nottingham Weird. University scientists who have created a colony of more than 20,000 worms. Jesus. And guess what? They're all from one original, whose bodies and organs do not appear to age. They are confident a single worm which did not divide would live forever, unless it catches an infection or another illness. Which deathless animal is your favorite? Let us know in the comments section down below. One more. That was really cool. I was quiet through that entire thing because I was really interested. That was really interesting. Because I saw them, I knew about like the octopus thing. I kind of knew about that. And it's about water. I uh, knew about the cockroaches. I knew about snakes. You know, you get so it's just common, it's common knowledge. Just because a snake's headless don't mean it's not a threat. Uh, and I live in Texas, so there you go. Salamanders knew about those regenerative, regenerative abilities. Uh, didn't know about the frogs. Didn't know about the flatworms. Well, I heard the I heard about it on flatworms, but I didn't know for sure. Didn't know about turtles. Didn't know about their deal. But that was pretty cool. That was very interesting. That was an interesting way of ending out a reaction week episode, a reaction week uh, installment. Uh, but yeah, that does it for reaction week for November, you guys, of 2019. So I mean, that's uh, if I can keep these going as long as possible, I definitely will. But we'll just have to wait and see how the future holds up because um, the more popular the channel gets, the more things are going to have to end up changing in order for me to keep the channel going. Otherwise, I get copyright claimed. Because some of these videos have been copyright claimed, and that's completely fine because they're for you guys as entertainment. I'm not making any money off any of these, and that's completely fine. Uh, but at the same time, when I do start making YouTube my full-time job and I'm able to do stuff like that, I have to watch and figure out which ones have copyright content and all that stuff. So depending on what happens, depends on if audio gets cut, if other audio gets put in this place, and stuff because I've learned a lot about computers and a lot about editing and audio software and audio and editing and all that kind of stuff just by doing YouTube by doing this amazing thing for you guys and trying to help create give you guys an insight and other things other than the horrible horrendous world that we live in but at the same time if, you guys, if I can just give you guys a good smile on your face you guys see a weird shocked look on my face as I figure something out interesting or if I see something scary or if I see something really cool so but that does does it. So as usual, keep uh, keep those uh, keep those suggestions coming in the comments down below because I'll definitely check them out in due time. Uh, if they don't make it into the next installment, they will make it into an installment of Reaction Week. And I try and give you guys a shout out at the same time and put your comment up there if it's possible or if I remember to do that. So all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Hey, and peace. What's up?